Here I was here, we were having dinner, and we were just sitting around, and one of the doctors asked me, uh, so what kind of interesting things do you see in your dry eye clinic? And I said, oh, I just saw this patient last week. Look what came into my clinic. This patient here. That is the pumpkin. So this is a patient that was led in by her family because she had bilateral pterygium surgeries and both of them had scarred down so much. She had surgery again with a different doctor and it just made things worse. So she came into my clinic and she had light perception. So the topic was going to be biologics and some of the things that we do in our dry eye clinic and actually this patient had dry eyes, so I think this incorporates a lot of the things that we were talking about, and you can see how we use different biologics uh, in our clinic. So my goal was have this surgery done at least a few months before uh, this meeting so that I can show you the results, and, and actually I did the surgery about two to three months ago, and I'll tell you exactly uh, everything that I did. How many doctors here would love to operate on this patient? All right, so dry eye, if you look at your patients with dry eye and you look at their conjunctiva, you're going to find uh, abnormalities in their conjunctiva, whether it's conjugalasis, panguecula, or pterygium. These things go hand in hand. If a patient has inflammatory mediators on the conjunctiva, it makes the conjunctiva weaker so that sun can actually change it quicker. And if you look, they found some of the inflammatory mediators in pterygium, and there's a new inflammatory mediator that they found, which is a lymphotoxin. So we've never thought of a pterygium as a lymph vessel vasculature problem, but it is actually this lymphotoxin, uh, LT, creates new lymphatic vessels underneath uh, the conjunctiva. And then if you look at dry eye disease, which we've been talking about the immunology, dry eye disease is a T-cell mediated uh, inflammation. So it's not a prostaglandin mediated inflammation. How do we know it's a T-cell mediated inflammation? Look at all the drops that actually have been FDA approved. So you have cyclosporin, you have lofitograss. They're all T-cell immunomodulators. So if you're looking for a specific inflammatory mediator for pterygium, it's uh, LT. And if you're looking for a specific inflammatory biomarker for dry eye, it's actually interleukin-17 uh, and interleukin-6. Uh, and a lot of this immunology work is being done with a group out in India and also uh, a group in Japan. But every day they're publishing more and more about these biomarkers. So we talked about the signs of deep, uh, dry eye disease. You see this conchalasis. You see penguiculas. All right, so where did those surgeons uh, go wrong? So when I was <coughs> talking to the family, I said, well, tell me a little bit about her history. And they said, this isn't a picture of her, but they basically described, I've had, this is a patient of mine. She said that when uh, her mom started, she basically had this red eye that didn't go away. So Carla was asking, what do I do with my red eye patients? And uh, Dr. Nadesco was saying that you know, we treat the dry eye. So you treat the dry eye first and then see if they're still red. But what mistake did they make? They made, a, they didn't treat her dry eye, they didn't decrease her inflammation, they didn't decrease decrease the redness. So they operated on a very hot eye. So what I decided is, I'm not gonna make that same mistake. I want this patient's, my bony gland dysfunction taken care of. I want her systemic inflammation taken care of. And I want her ocular inflammation taken care of. So this is actually another pterygium patient, basically the same thing. So 
If you operate on a hot eye that has dry eye disease, this is the result. So this is her right eye, and this is uh, her left eye. And again, she was, she was light perception. So my goal is operate on this one, get it nice, and then we're going to go to this one. So <clears throat> the surgical plan is improve her DD and control systemic inflammation. So the first thing that I did is I started doing uh, IPL and just squeezing the glands that I could to get a better tear film. And then I was using 0.09 cyclosporin in nanomicellular technology, which is CEQA. And then I started using a biologic injectable. So corticotropin is this biologic that's used in rheumatology, but it's actually approved for every eye inflammation that you can think of. Keratitis, uveitis, this is used by rheumatologists in rheumatoid uh, arthritis, it's used in Sjogren's, it's used in a lot of different things. Then in surgery, my goal was to remove the scar tissue and then use amniotic membrane to reconstruct whatever I could. Uh, and one of the other problems with the surgery that they did is they basically took all her conjunctiva. They decided all the conjunctiva was normal, so they took it all. So I was going to have to use amniotic membrane to actually reconstruct conjunctiva and reconstruct the cornea. And postoperatively, again, I want to control uh, inflammation, so I use a bunch of different biologics. So what is a biologic? It's a class of drug that's produced using a living system such as a microorganism, plant cell, or an animal cell. All right, so let's go to the first. So corticotropin has been around, ACTH has been around as a medication injectable for over 70 some years. It's actually Nobel Prize winning work. And the thought back in the day is ACTH will stimulate the, your body to produce steroids, internal steroids, which will decrease inflammation. But what they've now, what we now know is actually the corticotropin stimulates receptors called the melanin cortin receptors. Melanin MCR2 stimulates your own body to make steroid. MCR1, 3, 4, and 5 actually decrease the inflammatory mediators in your body, like T cell mediated inflammation. So it's an injectable twice a week. So the patient just does a little sub-Q injection. They're trained by a nurse. And what I do is I use this for 90 days. So if I have a dry eye patient that I've tried everything and we still can't get inflammation down, I do 90 days of corticotropin to decrease inflammation. So for her, I got six weeks of Injective, injectables in her to completely decrease all the inflammation in her body. And so we actually have done and published research on this. So we had the first paper that we did was on a patient who had bilateral red eyes, flaming red eyes that anything that we did would not control their redness. We got their meibomian gland dysfunction better, we got their tear foam better, but they still had this bright red eyes. 90 days of uh, corticotropin and the redness uh, went away. And now this patient, we've had this patient for 10, 11 years. Anytime they get um, overall body inflammation, we just go ahead and restart the corticotropin and that takes care of that body inflammation. And then we did an open label where we looked at the worst of the worst dry eye patients. They had, we had dry eye scores above 70. We had a patient who was at 98. And what we showed is corticotropin alone could decrease the signs and symptoms of dry eye. So this biologic is actually approved uh, for keratitis. So it's not even off label how you're using it. So I started her on that. 
uh, 80 units twice a week, and she was using CEQA, and we were doing IPL uh, before uh, surgery with expression. All right, so my surgical goals were to dissect everything off of the cornea, try to give myself some room for amniotic membrane transplant, and then after I did amniotic membrane for the conjunctiva here, go ahead and put an amniotic membrane uh, on the cornea. So this amniotic membrane, very easy to handle because it's lyophilized. So instead of using heat to dry up this amniotic membrane, it's freeze dried. So what happens is you uh, get all the water out, you freeze it, and then you can leave it at room temperature. So this is a disc, very easy to handle, and you can just pull it off the shelf. And it has a half-life of two years or so. There's different thicknesses, but 350 micron uh, thickness. It's white in color so that you can see it very easy. Here's a video of me uh, putting it on a different patient, but this is a patient with dry eye disease who had uh, ocular surface disease. You put it on, you put the contact lens over it, and actually this is just a few minutes after putting the contact lens. So the patient, it becomes transparent and the patient can actually see uh, after it. And then this is uh, the use of this amniotic membrane in pterygium surgery. All right, so here's some surgical videos. Um, some of my technicians were getting grossed out. They're like, oh my gosh, because they're used to, to watching cataract surgery where there's no blood. So actually we had to have some people leave the room. So this is me dissecting out the scar tissue uh, off of the cornea. And let's see what video is this. I think this is uh, putting the amniotic disc on the which uh, then I did a contact lens. I should have a video here. Of, this is the thick, thicker amniotic membrane that I used to replace uh, the conjunctiva. And so what I did here is I just got a big sheet, put it around, I put a little glue, I patched the amniotic membrane onto the glue, and then I just cut out the rest of the amniotic membrane. And then post-op, so what I use is a steroid, a load of pretinol, so she would get steroid response, but I also use platelet-rich plasma. So platelet-rich plasma uh, is taking the blood and spinning it down so that you just get 2% of that blood, and that 2% has 20 times the anti-inflammatory mediators and 20 times the growth factor. And so what we're trying to aim for is just this bit of area here so that we can get all of that, anti all of those anti-inflammatory mediators. And this is what it looks like. So it doesn't look like serum because you are getting a little bit uh, of blood. And we did experiments on what is gonna be the vehicle that we can put this in without getting clocked. Uh, so the things with PRP that are different than serum, you can't freeze it, you can't shake it, um, and you can't expose it to light because you will lose those anti-inflammatory mediators. Okay, so this is her two months uh, post-op. She's 2060 vision. She can walk into the clinic uh, by herself. And you know what her first question is? When can you do the other eye? <laughs> let, me, let me get my heart down, my heart rate down, and then we can start working uh, on the other eye. So these are biologics that we use um, in our clinic. Thank you.